what we have here is the new Extreme Mini EFIS. And basically what it is is a, a 4.3 inch diagonal screen mm -hmm. that fits in a round hole. It's a little bit offset. It's a little bit bigger than a round hole. Okay. But what it does is a lot. It's, it's basically a Mini EFIS and that's what we're calling it. It has full pedostatic functions, primary flight functions. It has full attitude heading functions, engine monitoring. It even has a built-in GPS, which uh, is used for basic navigation backup. And it also is going to drive our servos very shortly, so it will be an autopilot. So the idea with the Extreme Mini EFIS is that it could be used as a primary uh, instrument. It could be used as a backup instrument. It could be used as an engine monitor. It could be used as a primary flight instrument only. It could be used as just an autopilot, and you get a backup uh, AHARS in the process, a backup uh, EFIS with primary flight information. So whichever way you use it, primary or backup, or just for one of the functions or for all of them, it gives you a lot of options, and, and each item is modular, so you can pick and choose which functions you want and add the relevant boxes. This uh, rotary control over here adjusts the altimeter. We're not in any menu function. And the outer two buttons here change the page view. So we have here, for example, a full page primary flight instrument that has you know, basic airspeed, altitude, heading, attitude, and a bunch of ancillary information, including ground speed over here, because we do have a GPS. Uh, that's built into the system. If we page to the next page, here we have a split screen primary flight instrument and engine monitor, which you may or may not have, depending on whether you select the engine options. If we page ahead, we have just another option for display here, which some people might like. You can disable any page that you don't like. You press the center buttons, it pages through the auxiliary info that's in the middle there. And here we have a full page engine monitor. Some guys actually have purchased the Extreme just as an engine monitor and are ecstatic to get a backup uh, pedostatic instrument. If we page along here, here's just a basic GPS info page, which most people would disable. We also have an information display, which can be used for things like checklists. So I press the knob in and selected checklists. Here's our checklist. And here we have a checklist, which you can set up uh, just as a text file, and you can set up as many as you like. Mm -hmm. And you can check items and scroll down. So that's our checklist. Also on the info page is the ability to display any image. For example, he has a basic airport diagram. You can save any image you want to, to the unit and display, display something that might be relevant to you. So very flexible again, like our large instruments, very flexible. You cannot customize the screen like our large instruments, but it does an awful amount for a small 3 and 8 inch instrument. The price of the basic unit is $1,100 without the AHARs. If you add AHARs and engine monitoring, you're looking at about $3,000. So it's still very inexpensive. To add a couple of servos, that's an, another $2,000. So essentially, some guys have bought it just for the engine monitoring, thought it was a good deal just for an engine monitor, but you're getting a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. And if you don't choose the, the AHAR sensors, it has a GPS-derived solution. Okay. We're all familiar with that um, in handheld GPSs. But this will basically derive bank angle from the GPS and uh, flight vector. This was just launched at Oshkosh in 2010, so it's been around for a little while, and it's incredibly popular. The next development on this extreme is that it's going to be used as a controller and enunciator for the VPX, okay. the Vertical Power Solid State Circuit Breaker System. You'll be able to control the VPX from the extreme and get all alarms and enunciations on the extreme. So basically, there's definitely going to be people who buy just as a VPX enunciator controller mm -hmm. and are going to get a backup EFIS in the process. Aero TV is brought to you by... The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology.